Hi, this is Tom at Bob Johnson's Computer Stuff, and today we are going to be replacing the keyboard in a GTAC S400 G2. This is a relatively simple repair. Um, basically, all you have to do to change out this keyboard is remove this strip right above it. There's six screws um, in the face of the strip right there. And then after that, there are four small screws on the back of the hinge covers, two on each side. Now I'm gonna show you here the difference. I don't know if you can zoom in and see this or not, but the screws for the back are very tiny compared to the others. Not exactly like either of them are large at all. <clears throat> Now, once you have those four screws pulled out, the strip here you can see I'm lifting and pulling, and it's obvious there's something else holding this in. You do not want to just grab and yank. There is one more screw holding this in. And it is right here in the bottom. As I struggle to find it. Now it's just off center behind the docking port. You can see it's a very long screw. It's recessed right there. Once you take that screw out, the whole plate will just lift right out very easily. Might have to pry up on the hinge cover just a hair. Here you can see all the buttons and that's the mount for the screw. It is very bendy, but it is also weak. So if you pry and pull without taking that screw out, it will break. And then there's two more screws that hold the keyboard in place. These just happen to be the same screw as the ones for the top of the strip. One more screw here in the center. Now it looks like there would be another screw right here. It looks like maybe another model might have actually had it there. But the S400 G2 only has the two screws here. And then just pry up and lift. If you just flip it towards you, you can actually, this can sometimes be peeled off and the keyboard can be taped down. It's tacky. <clears throat> if yours does not peel up easily like this one did, uh, there's a decent chance you're going to have to get a spludger or here I'm using a putty knife, I think, um, to pry up on the tape. Once you have it loose, you can just set it away from you. There's some plastic here uh, held down with some like double-sided tape or something like that. Just take a spludger or something thin like a flathead and you can just start prying it up. Once you have a corner, you can peel 
and this plastic film just comes off. You do want to make sure that you're not pulling up on the ribbon cable as you pull up on the plastic. That way you're not ripping anything. And then the ribbon cable here is held in by two tabs, one on either side. It's actually one long tab, but it's got points on either side where you can pry up. Be very careful. If you pry up too hard, you can break this. This model does not have a backlight, but this right here is where it would attach. If yours had a backlight, there would be a second thin, smaller ribbon cable. Once you open the knuckle, you can just pull out the ribbon cable. It comes out very easily. And that is the removed keyboard. There's nothing wrong with this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in. Insertion of the ribbon cable, you do want to make sure that the knuckle is open before you try and put the ribbon cable in. It's a little hard to see here. My hand's getting away. Um, but you just push it right down into the slot. And then once it's inserted the whole way, you push down on both sides of the clamp at the same time. If you just push down on one, it will rock the other end back out again. So you do want to make sure you push on both. Once it's tight, you can give a light tug on it and make sure that it doesn't just pop right back out again. And then just stick everything back down and uh, assembly is just disassembly in reverse. Make sure these teeth fit down in, slides in, and then sets down. And everything else is just the same. And so that's about it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.